Okay, so today we're talking about AP automation. So I'm gonna to navigate to accounts payable and bills. I will notice here that I've got an upload and a refresh button. This indicates to me that AP automation is up and running in this environment. I'm gonna select upload. This allows me to import my bills, my PDFs for processing. Well, PDF, JPEG, uh, or TIFF files. You can upload up to 30 files at a time. So here I choose my location ID. So this is the entity for which this transaction is for. I can select options of generating each bill with a single line item that summarizes the total or all line items and associated amount. So you might wanna choose this option if you've got multiple accounts <clears throat> or different dimensions between uh, on the same invoice. So I have the option of dragging and dropping the files yeah, I can browse to open up my uh, Explorer and find the invoices that I want to upload. I'm going to just select 2020, 2220, should I say. Um, I can also have these files emailed and I'll show you that afterwards. So this first invoice I'm going to upload as a single line item that summarizes the total. And while that's processing, if I just click refresh, you'll see it says analyzing. So that's still busy processing the invoice. I'm gonna upload a second invoice and I'm gonna choose all line items with associated amounts. So I'm gonna browse the files and pick my 2021 example. So create bills, and then I'm gonna use refresh again and it's still analyzing both of these invoices. So while that's working, I'm just gonna to head to the configuration section to show you this new section you'll see if you've got AP automation switched on. You can see we have a bill upload and email services option. If I click on bill upload, this is really just information purposes and telling me which entities are configured to allow um, AP automation. The second option, email services, you can, select a default of generating each bill. So when bills are emailed into the um, functionality, you can either choose if a single line item uh, is used that summarizes the total or all line items and associated amounts. So when bills are being emailed, it will use this option. But if you upload bills manually, like we just did, you can switch between a single line item and all line items. So you might not want to email, have all bills emailed in um, to use the email service. So you'll also notice that the top level has its own mailbox and each subsequent entity has its own mailbox with the company ID and the entity ID. So this is the email address you'll give your vendors at, depending on whether you want invoices to be entered at the top level or at the um, relevant entities level. So I'm going to go back to the bills and hope that those bills have been uploaded. Yeah, they've been uploaded successfully. They're in draft mode. So it gives me the option opportunity to edit them before I um, submit them or post them, depending on whether you have approval switched on. So I look at the first bill, I can see there's only one line. That's exactly what I told Intact to do. It's pulled in. Um, the bill number, it's attached, the actual attachment, I can open the attachment and I see it alongside um, the invoice. So when I do need to verify pieces of information or potentially make some changes, I can have the invoice open at the same time. Okay, so these dimensional values, the account, uh, the department, uh, site, project, so these dimensions, this was all pre-populated based on the last invoice for this vendor, Green Apple. So Intact, it's similar to the duplicate from last bill functionality. Intact looks at what the last invoice was, what dimensions it used, and then it uses those. So I'm just gonna cancel this. I'm gonna go into the second invoice I uploaded, and you can see there's two lines because I chose to upload it with two lines. Again, because the last invoice that Intact processed for this vendor was one line, Intact used, entered the information split in the line level, but used the same dimensions because it doesn't know which dimensions to use. I can then make the manual changes I need to make and then post the invoice. Now, if I need to make changes to amounts um, on particular lines, I can do that as well. Uh, Intact just tries to pre-populate as much information as possible.
So I can post the invoice. And you'll notice the, the um, status has changed. You might also notice some import exceptions. So here is a duplicate. So Intact has flagged this invoice as a potential duplicate. It's in draft status, just like the other non-duplicate uh, invoice, but you've got an indication that Intact suspects that this is a duplicate and it needs further investigation. 